The perfect way to kick off this video is with a little bit of goose heart. I also have some liver here, um, but growing up eating hearts was a delicacy because there was only so much and between us three siblings, we all always fought over it and it was something that we always looked forward to, whether it was pheasant, goose, um, or any other wild game. So my uncle had some livers and hearts and I had to take some, mainly for nostalgia, but also like recently, since I'm training for the half marathon, my um, red blood cell count is very important since that's what shuttles oxygen around the body. And I donated blood and I agreed because I was too nice. They're like, would, would you consider doing a double? And they, it was called a power red, which I didn't know what that meant. A double unit of red blood cells, but of course, it's like common sense now that I think about. So my runs the past like three to four weeks have been a struggle. And a way to get red blood cell count up is eat a lot of iron. Or could also just take some supplements, but plenty of iron in liver and hearts. And I'm also eating a lot of like beef too, because red meat provides a lot of iron. So there it is. So good. Let's get, let's get some liver. Um, I guess I'm not as hardcore as liver king and eating it raw, but It actually tastes really good. I think, like liver, I like to taste liver better than hearts. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys a muscle building arm workout, and I'll be closing out the video with three honest reasons why you're not building muscle. From personal experience, as well as from the knowledge that I've gained over the years. So let's dive into it. See you in the gym after this bite of liver. I was thinking, and it's been a long time since I've done a basic arm workout. It's probably been six months to maybe even a year. I don't know. The main reason is because since running is a big part of my training right now, getting ready for the half marathon, I'm only weight training three to four days a week. So the majority of my movements are gonna be compound movements. So I'm not doing a lot of isolation stuff to where it's like just biceps. Like I'm doing a lot of like heavier rows where it's gonna be working my back and my biceps simultaneously, but I'm not getting much isolation work in there. And I just feel like doing a little bit of something different today. So I could provide you guys some um, ideas or a workout for putting on muscle for your arms, building your arms. Because if you're only doing compound movements and your um, biceps and triceps are pretty much the secondary mover, you're not gonna see a ton of growth and development with those muscles. But by isolating those muscles, you're going to develop them a lot more and getting stronger with them and also improving the, um, the pump and just having a really solid hypertrophy type of approach with those isolation movements. So with running, the, the less amount of weight training you do during the week, the higher the percentage, the movements should be compound movements. But if you can lift weights five to six days every single week, you should be including some pure isolation movements and have specific workouts dedicated to one specific muscle group, whether it is just arms, so it's biceps and triceps, or chest and triceps, back and biceps, shoulders, and all sorts of different other variations. Of course, there's different training splits that will help you optimize muscle growth, but it's good to change things up. I always get asked, what's the best training split for muscle building? And I always say it depends. I do truly believe the push-pull legs, push-pull legs, is the most optimal, but if you do that all the time, you're going to really wear down your central nervous system depending on the movements you do and also rep ranges and 
all that. So there's a lot that goes into it, um, but I always encourage change it up. So if you really want to develop a specific muscle group, utilize progressive overload and overload it <laughs> by doing it or working that muscle three to four days a week. And you will see some drastic results, which I realized I noticed some crazy progress with my back when I was training for 24 hours of pull-ups last year. Just by doing a ton of that specific muscle, you're going to develop it a lot more, but it's also good to really pay attention to your body, listen to it, and let it recover when it needs to, stretch, get good sleep, and prioritize that side of things as well. Because if you're really pushing it, there's a higher risk of injury there. So that's something to be aware of as well. But enough of the talk and let's get into this arm workout. Let's go. So when I do a strict arm day, I like to start with one strength bicep movement and one strength tricep movement. So of course we started with bicep hang curls. It's similar to concentration curl, but it's just hanging your arm down and keeping your arm perpendicular to the ground and not swinging too much. But as you could see in my one set, um, I had to swing a little bit and that's okay because I was pushing the weight a little bit more. The goal was six reps, but that set, I only got four reps. So that's not a big deal. Um, what I like to tell clients a lot of times is a rep range, like four to six reps. The goal is to hit the six reps, but if you only get four, that's a good thing. And then the next set, maybe drop the weight down so you can get closer to that six reps. Um, so the rep range I always like to rely on when it comes to strength for an isolation movement is anywhere between five to eight reps versus a compound movement that could be anywhere from one to five reps for strength. So let's get into triceps now. For the tricep strength movement, I'm doing single arm overhead dumbbell extension. The reason why I do single arm is so I can choose a dang heavy weight for that arm and my free arm can be there to spot me. This is very beneficial if you work out by yourself or you don't wanna ask somebody for a spot. So that's why I'm doing single arm rather than two arm and also doing single arm will help um, prevent imbalances. So by doing single arm, you're going to work both sides equal amounts and you're going to find out which side might be stronger or weaker. So the strength movements are done. Uh, the pump isn't crazy yet because the rep ranges of five to six reps aren't going to give you an insane pump. But now we're going to get into the eight to 15 and maybe up to 20 rep sets where the pump is gonna be absurd. Let's go. The second bicep exercise is incline bicep curl. This is working the bicep in the lengthened position. So it's going to help develop the peak of the bicep a lot more. So the key with these is to really force your elbows into the pad so you don't bring your arms forward. You want your arms to stay in a stationary position and to only move at the elbow when you're flexing, flexing the weight up. Um, and it's also very important to control throughout the entire movement. So 10 to 12 reps here. A few of the sets I only got to 10 reps, which then I moved the weight down a little bit 
and the pump is starting to fill in. But now we're moving on to the next tricep movement, which is dumbbell skull crushers. So once again, this is gonna isolate each arm to their specific weight. So each arm is working equal amounts. So we're gonna do 10 to 12 reps of these as well. starting to feel the juicy pump come in. So one thing I want you guys to not be afraid of, especially with some isolation movements, is going to failure. Yes, it's going to burn like heck, but when you bring a muscle to failure, it's gonna force it to grow and develop. So embrace that pain and know that it's going to lead to good things. And also that pain and failure leads to releasing endorphins and you'll feel even better compared to if you're just going through the motions during a workout, which I think a lot of people do. So bring the intensity, don't be afraid of failure, push yourself and become uncomfortable. And also the pump will be way better as well. So now we're gonna move into a superset which will be single arm cable tricep kickback supersetted with high curl single arm. So I'm gonna do my right arm with the kickbacks first, and I'll do left arm, then I'll go right arm curls, and then left arm curls. And I'll just go through that with a little rest, but not much. The rep range is going to be 12 to 18-ish. I'm hoping for around 15, and if I get 18, um, during a set, I'll drop it down to, or I'll increase weight slightly, slightly. To finish off the triceps, we're gonna do an exercise that I think is kind of slept on and most people probably don't even know about it, to be honest. So it's tricep, or push-up position, plank position, tricep extensions. So we're gonna do three rounds to failure with one minute rest between sets. Get that rest going. It's such a deflating feeling when you fail. But it's a good thing. You're forcing growth and development. Triceps, shot. Dunzo. For the bicep finisher, I'm doing banded bicep curls with a five second isometric hold. The coolest thing with bands is that the further you stretch it, the more the resistance there will be. So that's why doing isometric holds with bands can be very <laughs> beneficial. And of course, since this is a finisher, I'm going to failure. <laughs> Now here are the three honest reasons why you're not putting on muscle. The first one, I'm just gonna get it out of the way because I know you've all heard it, but it's a very important one that determines whether you put on weight or you don't, is eating enough. I'm gonna keep this short and brief because you've heard it before. And by eating enough, it doesn't come down to just calories. It comes down to eating the right things such as 
protein. Protein is crucial. If you don't get enough protein, you're just not going to build muscle. You can work out as hard as you want, but by not consuming enough of the right things, you will not get the results you desire. Number two is not committing to a bulk long enough. This is the one that I pushed off for so long. I would start bulks, but then I'm sure a lot of you can relate. Like once you get one to two months in, you start thinking about wanting to lean down or lose a little bit of weight because you're kind of uncomfortable with putting on some fat. But when you are bulking, you will put on a little bit of fat. But I highly encourage you to embrace it. Uh, one to two months of bulking will not get you to where you want to be. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. Um, commit to an eight to 12 month stretch. Yes, that can be intimidating, but I promise you by the end of it, you are going to be so happy with the results and you also have to look at it from a metabolism building phase as well. So the bulk, yeah, you're putting on muscle, but by putting on muscle and building your frame and eating a lot, your body's metabolism is going to rev up so much. And then for the rest of your life, maintaining that muscle is going to be so much easier. And by having a higher metabolism, it's so much easier to be lean for life. So commit to that discomfort for the eight to 12 months, just one time and you'll thank yourself. I will leave it at that. Don't get cold feet, dive in, commit. Even if you're one to two months in, I know you're gonna get that itch to be like, ah, oh, I, should, I should burn a little bit of, bit of fat here, but don't. Find your accountability, find somebody else to do it with you, find yourself a coach, whatever it takes to commit to the plan and stick with it without taking any months off and live with the never off track mindset, of course. Number three is ignoring important training variables. When we think of a workout, we think of sets, reps, rest time. Yes, those are very important things that we need to uh, build our workouts around, but there's a lot more to a workout than just three sets of 10 reps. Because when you think about it, three sets of 10 reps of doing just fast tempo and out of control is a lot easier versus if you did like slow five to six second reps, you're gonna use a lot lower weight. There's a time and a place for both of those and it's very important to get strong <clears throat> in all three portions of the rep. Most people just concentrate on the concentric uh, portion of the rep, which is during bench, when you press, like how strong can you press the weight? But nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, but a lot of people don't pay attention to the eccentric, the moving down, controlled. You see a lot of people in the gym, they, they, they unrack the bench, ready to go, and then they just freaking like drop it fast and have zero control on the way down. So they can use that rebound momentum to help them start moving it back up. But <clears throat> the stronger you get with your eccentric, the more your muscles are going to develop. It's just night and day difference. Because if you're only working on the concentric side of things, that's one third of the rep. You gotta be strong throughout the entire rep. And I think this is very overlooked. There's also the isometric, a portion of the rep which would be during a bench if you were just holding the bar down here but also like keeping your chest engaged not just like letting it crush you <clears throat> so pause reps um working on certain tempo reps uh, like negatives whether it's a uh, three to four seconds down on your bench and then explosive up you need to do those types of things as well and also change up your rep ranges too like one training phase, four to six weeks, you could be in the rep range of four to five reps for say bench press. And then the next training phase, maybe go my more hypertrophy style workouts to help get better pumps, to help force your muscles to grow and also implement things like drop sets 
and training to failure. Those are two very important things and bring the intensity. If you're just going through the motions and you're not making yourself uncomfortable and feeling the burn to where it like hurts so dang bad that you're like laughing, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. I'm not saying every set should be that way, but when you're doing drop sets, sets to failure, a lot of the isometric or isolation type of movements, like your curls, triceps, and single muscle movements, very important. So those are the three reasons why, honest reasons why you're not putting on muscle. So not eating enough of the right things, not committing to a long enough bulk, and then ignoring certain training variables. So I hope you found some value in this video and go find some goose hearts or any hearts, liver, whatever it takes to help increase your red blood cell. Not everybody needs that, but that's a good little tip for you runners out there. If you donate blood and you need to gain those red blood cells back, get that liver and heart. But thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and remember, you're never off track. There's always something you can do to support your health and fitness.